So this vlog is about going to the movies with your service dog. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to say in this video is if you're going to be attending the movies with your service dog, you need to be pretty sure that they can handle very, very loud noises, bright flashing lights, and also quite a bit of vibration because especially if you're going to like an action-packed film, uh, the floor tends to vibrate quite a bit. Possibly if it's your first movie with a service dog, maybe try to avoid like the action-packed thrillers and adventure movies and things where lots of things blow up. <laughs> Although those are the best movies, aren't they Bugsy? So if it's your first one, I do suggest uh, trying to take them to an easier, maybe more kid-friendly movie. Uh, though you don't have to, obviously you know your dog well enough to know what they're capable of. Sorry for all the babbling. So in this vlog, I'm just going to go over a bunch of tips and tricks. So overall, my experience going to the movie theater with my service dog has been pretty darn good. I have to say, you know, because of where we live and everything, we never, would you stop breathing so loudly? Sheesh. Um, we never had any access problems, rarely have any problems with other moviegoers and things like that, but that's partly due to many of the tips I will share in this video. Thankfully Bugsy will sleep through literally just about anything. Um, he slept through the Hobbit movie today, uh, he slept through Thor, he slept through Robocop like it was a freaking lullaby. Go early. Make sure that you are the first and last person in and out of your particular theme. Even if you don't think you're gonna have access problems, even if you don't think you're gonna run into other people uh, who want to know your life story, <laughs> it is a great way to ensure that you don't get bombarded with questions about you, your dog, your disability, and literally everything a person could ever ask you in the world because people always want to do that. Um, so going super, super early allows you to be able to get your tickets, get your concessions, uh, go find your seating before anybody else arrives. And while it might be kind of annoying and obnoxious to get there early, I swear to you it makes a world of difference. I usually arrive about a half hour early. Granted, I allot myself a little extra time because of the wheelchair that does slow things down a bit. Maybe add like another 10 or 15 minutes if you plan to wait in the concessions line for things like popcorn or drinks. I don't usually. I usually get my own stuff and smuggle it into the movie theater. And I'm not sure if I should be saying this on a YouTube video. But anyway, going between 20 to 35 five-ish minutes early can be a lifesaver. If you can time it right, the best possible situation would be to get everything, go to the bathroom, do everything you have to do, I'd say around 20-25 minutes ahead of time. Um, you're automatically pretty much going to miss everybody. If you must have popcorn or candy or something, I highly suggest going to the theater with somebody that can wait in line and purchase your concessions for you. And while they are purchasing your stuff, you can head over to your theater and get get your seats. Best thing is really just get there early. I know that sounds ridiculous and can be very annoying, but if you get in there before everyone else starts coming, they're not going to be looking for, oh my god, where's that girl with the dog? I like, you know, I gotta find the dog, gotta pet the dog. And once the lights dim and the movie begins, you're pretty much in the clear. Even if you do have to, say, get up and go to the bathroom halfway through, even if people see your dog, they're not going to get up while the movie is going to just come and ask you all these random ass questions and pester you about it. This is probably more important than getting there early. Definitely make sure that you are the last person out of the theater. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I guarantee you it will make your life so much easier if you do. And if possible, um, have the person that you went to the movie with walk out the door in front of you because oftentimes even if you think you got in unseen um, oftentimes there will be children or even adults waiting to ambush you on the other side of the door it happens way more than you would think that is the one thing I really want to warn you about so another big tip I have is if you have to pee and you feel like you're gonna have to pee at the end of the movie for the love of God go before the movie ends try to go at what seems to be like you know a really boring part like mushy sappy part that no one gives a crap about just go pee then if you can hold it until you get home but yes just please be careful because people will ambush you maybe not all the time but it's gonna happen sooner or later but when it does happen it sucks and it's often hard to get out of I've actually had people block my way to the exit before um 
so that's not fun. If you're not in a hurry, it never hurts to wait until they start, you know, coming in like 10 minutes later to clean the theater. Uh, depends on how much of a rush you're in. But also, for sure, try to have the person you're going to the movies with possibly walk out in front of you and kind of buffer a way through to the exit for you. Um, that will help a lot. Some service dog handlers choose to use things such as mutt muffs or uh, cotton balls, just something to block out some of the noise for their service dog. I don't do this frankly just because Bugsy sleeps through anything. He's actually slept through an earthquake before. In all honesty, I do think that a service dog should be able to make it through a movie without something like that, but I do know some handlers who choose to use them purely just for comfort. Their dog can get through without it, but it's obviously going to make things a little more comfortable for them. And that's just my opinion, so my opinion literally means nothing to you guys, so don't attack me for that. Some handlers, especially uh, those who have a service dog, such as a greyhound a breed that is sensitive on the hard floors, some of them may choose to use a blanket or a placemat. I personally never chose to use one just because it wasn't necessary with Bugsy, and I also didn't want him to become too dependent on it. Um, but it can definitely be good in movie theaters, partly also because there's often a lot of sticky, nasty ick on the floors, and it's gross. Uh, that is my other mega tip. Every time you pick your seat, always check the floor for whether it's like sticky, gross butter, spilled soda, nasty nacho cheese everywhere, whatever. Uh, just definitely check the floor because it's gonna really suck if you have to drive home with your dog covered in nasty nacho cheese vomit and root beer on the way home. And I don't think he's gonna be <laughs> very happy with you either if you make him lay in it. Oh, and another huge, huge, huge warning I want to put out there. Please, please, please do not take your service dog to a midnight movie premiere. Whether you feel that your disability allows you to go to things like that, this may just be my personal view, but I do not think it's safe. And if you do, be prepared for the consequences because it can be extremely dangerous uh, for both you and your dog. Um, and even if you don't run into problems, it's probably going to be hell navigating through there. But it's, it's going to be a lot like, say you go shopping on Black Friday with your service dog. Most handlers avoid that like the plague, but it would probably be like five times worse. Those midnight movie premieres can be brutal. People do not look where they're going. They shove, they trample. I've actually seen fights break out, so I definitely want to discourage any service dog handlers out there from taking their service dog to a midnight movie premiere. You do not want to put your dog in that type of situation where they could become seriously injured or traumatized beyond repair. Uh, so, so, okay, so now I'm going to talk about some of the seating arrangements, what might and might not work best for you and your dog. So this is my pathetic little diagram of the average movie theater. As you can see, I have circled a bunch of various seating options. The ones I have circled are the ones I believe to be the best areas for sitting with a service dog. Which one works best for you is all going to depend on a bunch of things. Your personal preferences, your medical needs, and also your individual dog. Now let's take a look at each seating position and talk about which type of service dog team they'd be best for. Number one, this is typically where the handicapped seating is, which is going to be best for those who use assistive devices such as wheelchairs, canes, or walkers, and it can also be good for those who have large breed service dogs and need the extra space. Once the theater is full and you are absolutely sure that no other handicapped people will be needing one of these seats, I suggest using one yourself as they are definitely the most comfortable option for both you and your dog regardless of whether or not you are physically disabled. This is also a really good place to sit if you need quick and easy access to the exit. Number two, this is the row of seating that is farthest back in the theater. If you are physically able to make it to the back row of seats and do not need quick and easy access to the exit for medical reasons, then this is definitely an ideal spot for you and your dog to sit throughout the movie. It's also a pretty good location to not have to worry about having to move to let other people in and out of the row. Number three is sort of a compromise between number one and number two. You have pretty quick and easy access to the exit while also sitting closer to the screen so you can actually see more of the movie while you're watching it. Only downside to this seating location 
is that you will often have to move to let people in and out of your row. Number four is what I like to call the sweet spot. Next to the handicap seating, this is just about the best place you're ever going to be able to sit. Quick and easy access to the exit for medical emergencies, an abundance of space if you have a large breed service dog, close enough that you can still enjoy the movie, but far enough away that you don't have to crane your neck just to look at the screen. The only downside to sitting in this position is that people often see your dog as they're walking in. Number five and number six. Let's face it, no one ever wants to sit here, but it's always good to have a backup seating arrangement just in case. And these are two locations where you will never ever have to worry about other people bothering your dog or even seeing your dog. Okay, so I know this video wasn't super detailed, um, but these are definitely some things that I had to figure out, um, you know, over time going to the movies. My first movie experience was frankly quite miserable. Uh, Bugsy did a great job, but I, however, did not. So if you have had a bad experience at the movie with your service dog, possibly consider giving it another try using some of these tips.